for a price commission because they don't make any money, they actually lose money. But the incredible thing is, now that's not the real losses. If you took into account the amount of work that that's done by the Conservation Commission to monitor the performance of the DEC, if you take into consideration all the work that the DEC has to do to find out where to establish fauna habitat zones, and all the other things that go into the forest industry that are side issues that are caused by the logging, if all of that fell away, the amount of money that that would save and could reallocate for conservation purposes would be astronomical compared to what it is today. And uh, if if we drive the, if by the, 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 the triple bottom line, if you want to adopt the financial reward for what you're doing, there's no financial reward for you guys here. You own that forest together with me. It doesn't belong to the government, it doesn't belong to the FPC, it belongs to us and our kids. We're not going to get the cent for it. We're getting our environmental values destroyed. Well, we haven't got any money to show for it. Not the cent. So, there is no earthly reason on that basis to keep going. There's no earthly reason from a community's point of view who want those forests for recreation and for other things, from an environmental point of view, to save the remnants of our native, uh, native fauna or our flora. The fact that we've got climate change staring down the track, and no matter whether you take the most optimistic point of view or the most pessimistic, in any case, these forests the threat that they're under is cumulative. It's disturbance from fire, it's disturbance from logging, it's disturbance for whatever reason. And it's cumulative, all those things on top of each other, together then with the, the, the critical one, the last, to put the, uh, really put the icing on the cake, lack of water, rainfall, climate change. You go to your garden and you've got your watering down by heart, see how your garden looks like. The forest is no different. So there's, there's just no reason why on earth we should remain in our native forest other than to leave them where they are for all the benefits, the environmental benefits that they offer us. Increased rainfall because of uh, the cover that you get from the grounds of trees. That's why Israel planted the whole plantations to attract rain because forests do attract rain. There isn't a single reason that anyone that I know of can come up with that makes sense for us to continue with what we're doing. And I really, I would really hope that uh, after we've gone, that you guys all uh, take the documents that we provided, particularly the one on the rainfall issue, and wait and see what happens at the end of April when the EPA's report comes out. And then I hope that we are again given the opportunity to answer further questions from you, or you tell us what you want us to do, some research for you fellows so that you come up with a comprehensive, well-researched policy to take to your party. Because the time for change is definitely needed, and we are appealing to you to adopt the policy that we have, and that this is stop. It's finished. It's over and done with. It's irresponsible to continue. Then finally, I'll take those, those two. We've been starting a big fight with a company called VRL, who flew under the radar and uh, mined 130,000 tons of oxide ore in the Bindun and shipped it in three shiploads to China where they uh, processed it so it affected the determined quality. And they have, uh, they have uh, pegged uh, or asked for exploration licenses over 37,500 odd square kilometers. So you multiply that by 100 and you get hectares. I'll give you an idea, we're talking about 3 million plus. And it's all, most of it's on farmland, about 80%. Uh, and the, about 12% is in the forest issue, so that's another threat to the forest. <laughs> we don't cut it down for wood. We're going to cut it down altogether and heap it up so we can get the ground that it's standing in. Uh, and there's a, a, a lot of groups, have, there's a major group started in, in uh, Bindun. Let's talk to the Premier, in fact, this Friday about this particular problem. There's a major kafuku going on in Bridgetown Greenbushes. There's another one going on in in, uh, in uh, Manjima. And uh, our 37, 37 shires are affected by these proposals. And on the back of that map, which is the last entry in your folder, you can see the names of the shires. And we are working on notifying local government what this particular exercise uh, presents as a threat to their communities, their amenities, their farms. Etc. So that's mainly for information. That issue will probably be in the papers before very long, so you can follow it then. But 
We welcome any queries and we welcome the opportunity to speak to you at some future time. Uh, and uh, we'll also invite you to tell us what you want us to do to help you. Now. All right, thanks, Robin. Beth.